Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to take the derivative of something that's a little bit more complicated. This will require a combination of using the quotient rule as well as the chain rule. And as long as you follow the rules, it shouldn't be that bad. So recognize here that we have two functions, a numerator and denominator. Let's call this f of x and g of x, and they're both raised to some exponent. So that's where you realize you'll have to use both the quotient rule and the chain rule. So y prime is equal to, take the denominator, which is 5x cubed plus 2x squared raised to the second power. So we simply copy the denominator down, times the derivative of the numerator. Now the numerator has an exponent here, so we use the chain rule. We write 3 times 4x squared minus 3x to the 3 minus 1 power, which is 2, times the derivative of what's inside, so times 8x to the first power minus 3. Remember, when you take the derivative, it's the exponent times the constant, 8, x to the 2 minus 1, minus, and of course, the derivative of 3x is simply 3. So now we have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. That's this part of the derivative. Now we go minus the numerator, which is 4x squared minus 3x raised to the third power, so that's the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator. So here we have the denominator. To take the derivative of that, we have to use the chain rule. So it's times 2 times 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the 2 minus 1, which is first power, times the derivative of what's inside. So it would be 15x squared plus 4x. All right, so now we have the denominator times the derivative of the denominator using the chain rule, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator using the chain rule, and the whole thing divided by, ho oh, ho, oh, the denominator squared. So that would be 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the second power squared, which means to the fourth power. And that's the derivative of that. Now, you usually don't want to leave it quite like this especially since you can probably factor out some common factors. So let's look for those. So we have y prime is equal to, so we have one term minus another term. We have a 5x cubed plus 2x squared. And we have a 5x cubed plus 2x squared. So we can factor one of those out because here's the second power, here's the first power, so we can factor that out. So we have 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the first power. We have a 4x squared minus 3x. And we have a 4x squared minus 3x here, so the second power, there, so the third power, so we can factor out a 4x squared minus 3x to the second power. <clears throat> we have an 8x minus 3, that's not common. We have a 15x squared minus plus 4x, which is not common, so they stay there. So what do we have left? After we factor out this, that's one of these and two of those, we have one of these left, so that is... 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the first power. We still have the 3. The 4x squared minus 3x squared, quantity squared, that is being factored out, so that's gone, and we still have the 8x minus 3. Minus, we have two of these factored out. We have one left, so that's 4x squared minus 3x to the first power. We still have the 2. We factored this out, so that's gone, and we still have this, so times 15x squared plus 4x, like that. Put the final bracket in here, so you can see how we factored these out, and then the whole thing divided by the denominator, which is 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the fourth power. All right, now let's take a look here. Do we notice something in common? We have a 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the fourth power. We have a 5x cubed plus 2x squared to the first power. So definitely this will factor out with one of those that will now make that to the third power. And I think that's it. So we could rewrite it to make it clean, but realize this is now gone. This is now to the third power, and that is our solution. That's the derivative of this quotient. Now, if you, want, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and multiply all this out. Collect common terms, so that's just an exercise in algebra, which if your teacher wants you to do that, by ob obvious means you need to do that. If not, you just leave it like that. That's the final solution.
All right. Now, the next example, we'll use all three rules all at once. So let's see what that looks like.